Hey, what's going on, everyone? Josh here with Piano Marvel. And today I'm going to be exploring the Sasser and why the Sasser is the way that it is, what it means, why it was made, how it works, all the different types of questions that you might have about the Sasser. I'm going to be jumping into today. So I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let's jump in to the Sasser. So if you've never heard of the Sasser, I feel so bad saying it like 12 times in a row there. Let's figure out first what it is, what it stands for. So, and, and where you can find it, that's a great place to start. So right here, you'll see on the dashboard, if you click on this site reading icon, it's going to open up the Sasser, okay? And you'll notice right here, we have this logo and it says Sasser, the Standard Assessment of Sight Reading. Sasser is an acronym for the Standard Assessment of Sight Reading. And what that is, this the Sasser is something that we created at Piano Marvel a few years ago with the help of Aaron Garner and Sean Slade. And these two individuals, what they did is they tried to, and I think very successfully, made a product of its own kind, something that had never been done before. And what it is, is a test that will help you or help your students to figure out what their sight reading skills are. Before that, you would have to ask someone how well they are at sight reading and they would say, oh, I'm okay, or I'm not that good. It was hard to really gauge. What we've done is we have leveled with the help of many different individuals, including some really top level pianists, some of the best pianists and sight readers in the world to help us grade over 3000 different sight reading examples. So that's what this Sasser is all about. And we plan to continue to grow those sight reading examples too, so that the test continues to get bigger and bigger. That's where we are today. So with all that being said, you might be thinking, okay, well, I want to figure out my Sasser score. What do I do to do that? Well, once you're plugged in to a MIDI enabled keyboard, we recommend that you go in to the start test now, obviously, because we need to start the test. Now, this is the tricky part, okay? What level do you choose? Some people may think, oh, well, I'm a beginner pianist, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on beginner. This is actually something we don't recommend. And the reason why is because for the Sasser, we want people to overestimate their abilities for a number of reasons. First things first, if you click on beginner, but you played maybe for a couple years when you were a kid and now you're returning to it a few years later or maybe many years later, you might have some skills that you don't even remember that you had with reading. I know my wife was like that. When I returned to piano myself, she had played it for many more years when I was when she was a kid, and she could sight read better than I did, but better than I can. Not the case anymore, but she could. And so we want to make sure that we find a level that is good for you so that the sasser doesn't take too long. And it, and it helps to find your level quick. You could take a sasser, if, if you're a really, really good reader, like one of the top in the world, and you click on beginner, what it's going to do is it's going to slowly move through the sasser at every level. There's a lot of levels in Piano Marvel. There's, in, in the Sasser, excuse me. There's level 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, and it continues that pattern 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, all the way up through 18E. So it would take a very long time to move through every single example if you continue to stay above 80%, which you don't know about yet, possibly, if you've never taken the Sasser. So let me jump into that later, but just heed the warning that we want you to overestimate your abilities because it will help you to find the level. I know that that seems counterintuitive to what a lot of people usually say, but try it out. I promise you it'll work. I know for myself, I'm trying to hopefully one day be in the professional. If I would click though on the professional right now, what I always click on to start the test is this advanced. But if I click on professional, what's going to happen is it's going to pick a song that if I tried to read this, I could probably read it slow, but if I tried to read this at the speed it's going to ask me to, I would completely fail. And maybe for the fun of it right now, we can just show you what it looks like, just so you know what it looks like when you pick a level that is too hard, okay? Everyone needs to find their level that they're at. That's totally fine. Don't be ashamed of it. So here we One, go. Two, set, go.
actually pretty good. Um, I'm proud of that, but I still did it. I'm so close to getting to a professional. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, one day, one day I'll be there. Mark my words. Anyways, I'm not there today. And you'll notice that up here, it says stay above 80. Womp, womp. I got a X. Okay. And that's because the test, like I said, is smart. I believe I said this. Uh, and if you don't get above 80 on the first time, then we think that this is probably too hard of, an, uh, of a level for you. And so what we say is when you click continue, you go back to this and it would let me know, okay, I need to go click on advanced at a level lower. Okay. So don't be afraid to try intermediate. And if you've been doing the sasser for a while, or let's say you haven't done it for a couple months, but you've been practicing really hard and you want to come back to it, don't be afraid to try intermediate or like myself, like I've been doing advanced for maybe a year or something or more now. And so one day I'm going to click on professional and it's every day after, you know, it may only happen professional once and then not happen for another month. But at some point I'm going to be clicking professional more and more until it becomes the new norm. So just be willing to experiment. Okay. We want you to not get stagnant. That's one of the reasons that we say overestimate your ability. Okay. So once you find the level, kind of like what I just did here, what I'm going to do for this example, instead of clicking on advanced, I'm going to click intermediate because I think that's a great level for many people to start out at. Okay. And if I just want to give you a little disclaimer now, if you do start at beginner, it's fine. If you've never played or sight read music, or you haven't done it in a long time, everyone needs to find their level. Like I was mentioning a few levels a few minutes ago, you need to find where you are. And from there you can build yourself up. Okay. So don't be ashamed. I recently was trying to learn chess and I came into this chess. My wife and I were trying to play chess and play against the computer. And I had to go all the way down to level one. I tried level 12, beat level seven, beat level nine, beat. I had to go all the way to one. Okay. So if that's where it is, it's fine. You need to find your level. And from there you can build, but start, you can then start building yourself up. Okay. So we're going to go into intermediate. Like I said, I think this is a great place for most people to start because this tester is going to work its best here. It's going to be able to move faster, which I'm about to explain. So you might notice once you click on your level, it's or on the, uh, on the level, it's going to start opening the exercise and it's going to give you a countdown. And once this countdown reaches zero, it's game time. Like you have to read whatever this music one, is you're seeing. Two, I can't scroll. Three, I can't four, do anything. One, I need to sight read two, this when it set, gets to zero. Go. So sometimes without that cursor. Uh, now, if you want to add the cursor, there's actually a preference for you to be able to do that, but I don't want to mess up. Maybe I'll show you that a few minutes later after we finish the test. But uh, I have the cursor hidden, so it makes the sasser even a little bit harder. Um, but let's dive in to what just happened, okay? So I got a 96, and I don't know if you saw it, but when I started the test, it actually up here said a level, okay? I don't remember what it says, but I do know that what's about to happen is it's about to give me a level 3B. Now, I could guess that it started me at, well, 3A, 2E, 2D. I would guess it would have started me there because when you get, I know that when you get a 96%, when you do relatively well on the exercise, it's going to move you up three buckets. I mentioned earlier, I believe there's level 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, all the way through 18D and 18E. And so those we refer to as buckets. Aaron, the guy who helped design this, he calls them buckets. So what we do after you get, a, after you pass off an example is we say, okay, how well did you do? If you did really well, if you get 100, we're going to move you up five buckets. If you barely scraped by, which happens all the time, uh, we're going to move you up only one bucket. 
But if you did pretty well, like I just did here, we're going to move you up three. So let's see what happens on this next example when I go down here and click next. You could also press the continue up there. Uh, again, we get 20 seconds. And if you want to just scroll through and see what's happening, you can do that. You can play it if you want. Whatever you want to do. And if this is easy for you, you can also just click play. And that's going to just bypass the countdown and start One, you playing. Okay, two, So this will help three, you take the task set, a little go. faster. sake of this example. That I messed up, okay? So I got a 28%. What you're going to see is that up here, I got a strike, okay? Like I mentioned earlier, it's game on when you get that countdown. The Sasser is basically a video game, okay? And what it's going to help you do is to help you find your level. And the only way to help you find your level is to keep getting harder examples until you start getting strikes. And when you start getting strikes, what it's going to do is attempt to find your level, okay? So you notice before it was, I believe, at 3B. Now it's taken me all the way back down to 2D, where I believe we started, okay? 2D because I did so poorly on that exercise, I got a 28. So it's moved me way far down. And now I need to play an exercise in 2D. And basically the way that the Sasser goes is you keep playing through the Sasser until you get three strikes. And it's just gonna continually keep getting harder and attempting to find your level. Now, real quick sidebar, I just wanna show you, if you did wanna turn on that, uh, cursor, you could do that right there by just going to your name, your preferences, and then turning on the cursor or not. And it's going to show you a little dialog box. Right there is the default. If you just click reset, it'll put it there. But I had it off. It makes the sasser a little harder because you have to be counting and it's going to mimic real sheet music where you don't have a cursor. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about that a lot of people have questions about is how does the sasser work? We've talked a little bit about the scoring, but I want to jump into that just a little bit more. I know this video is going long. I'm sorry, but to understand the Sasser, there's a lot of facets. It's really intricate. Um, so I'm going to click Start Test now. I'm going to click on Advanced. And I want you to notice where we're starting, OK? It says 7D. Honestly, for me, this example, it would be pretty easy. I'm going to turn this metronome on. I love the metronome when I play. Uh, I'm going to click Play. And I'm just going to play this one, exercise real quick, OK? Two, three, four, one. Here we go. Set, go. or so. Um, oh, I lucked out. I got 100. Okay. So it moved me all the way up to 8D. Okay. Even though I missed a couple notes, that's something you'll find in Piano Marvel that even if you do miss a couple notes here and there, it will still sometimes give you a 100 if there's just loads of notes. Because honestly, the more you play piano, you'll realize that if there's 6,000 notes in a piece, it's pretty human to miss a couple notes in that 6,000. There's some pianists that can just never miss stuff, it seems like, but it's pretty human to at least miss a couple. And that's what we've emulated here with Piano Marvel in the engine. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to explain how we score, how the Sasser works with scoring. So let's dive into that for these last couple minutes, okay? So you'll see, I just got 100%. I moved up five levels, five buckets, and now I'm in 8D, okay? Say my current Sasser score is 780. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this continue button and it's going to find another example for me. Now, for the, for the purpose of trying to explain how the scoring works, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do 
not that well. Okay. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get maybe like a One, 70 or something two, like that. Okay. Set, I'm not going to fail it really hard, go. but. That was a real mistake, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna play it minor. Okay, so. Hopefully that was bad enough, 73, okay? So now you'll see I did not terrible, but I didn't stay above 80, and so I got my first strike. And like I think I said earlier, three strikes you're out of the ball game. So now instead of being at 8D where I was, it's dropped me down to 8C, and my Sasser score went down to 865. Now this is one of the most important parts because this is the question we get the most is, well, now if I go to the next song, which is an easier song, it's an 8C now, and let's say I get 100% on this. I'm going to try to get 100% on this. How many One, points do you think I'm going to get? Two, okay. I'm going to try to seven, get 100. I'm probably not. Go. I think I may move up at least one bucket, okay? You see, I moved up one, uh, two buckets, actually, okay? So I just moved up two buckets up to 8E. I believe that was two buckets. And so now my Sasser score, it's only gone up one point. And the reason why is because it's only gone up one point, but I did pretty well. I mean, I got a 91%. This is what always throws people off is you don't start making points until you get to a higher level than where you failed, Okay, and I, I know I say fail, and I, I use that nicely because this test is a stress test. It's designed to get you to a place where you fail. We're all going to fail at some point in this test, okay? I've only seen one person that's just able to keep going, and they actually beat the test. And I've heard it happens every now and then, but these people are just amazing. So for most of us mere mortals, <laughs> it's going to get to a place where we fail. And that's fine when we fail, okay? So now that I got above an 80, what would happen now is if I went back in here to continue and I pressed it, if I was able to get about 100 here, it would get me to 90 and I would then be able to really get my points back going up and hopefully get to, you know, around maybe one of my highest scores or what I've been getting recently, which has actually been, which you can see right here and we saw earlier, you know, around 1068, 1077. So um, there you go, folks. That's how the Sasser works. I really, truly hope that this video helped you understand how the Sasser works, how you can use it. And real quick, but before we go, I know this video is kind of longer, but I, I do want to explain one of the things that we talk about. You can see it right here is how do you improve your sight reading score? And if you go ahead and you click on this, there's some awesome tips in there. I myself use some of them. One of the ones uh, that I used was do the Sasser every single day, okay? I'd highly recommend that. I did that for two or three months straight, I believe, or just about every single day, if not every single day. And my Sasser score, coupled with the fact that I was going through this method and technique, I went through 3A, 4, oh, sorry, th uh, method 3, method 4, method 5, and a little bit into method six. And doing that coupled with doing the Sasser every day helped me take my Sasser score from 330 up into the 600s and even 700s on some days. So definitely be sure to use these tips down here to help you, okay? Once you get into that 600, 700 score, you might be questioning, well, how do I get better there? Uh, the good news that I have for you is we have some amazing resources in Piano Marvel to help you once you get there. One of the things that I love to tell people and that I myself started using at that level was Box Scholar's Sight Reading and Harmony, okay? So I'm just going to click Box Scholar right here, 
and I believe it's going to show up, the sight reading and harmony. Now, using this book is a little bit harder. We do have a video that explains this. I don't want to dive into it now, but this is a great resource that will help you. Um, another great resource that will help you as well, and one that I use currently right now, is Sight Reading Samurai. Uh, so, be sure to check these kind of things out. I'm using Sight Reading Samurai to get my score, uh, you know, hopefully up to where I can play the site reading, uh, the Sasser from the professional level. So I hope to be there one day. Basically the way that the Samurai works is it's a video game. You just go through each level and you have to beat this one at 80% to unlock the next one. Okay. That's how the Samurai works. It's really fun. It's kind of like a video game, kind of like the Sasser in a way. Um, and a lot of, all these songs are part of the Sasser, which I know it's going to get some flack and some people will say, well, then you're not sight reading. Trust me. If you made it through this video this long, trust me, doing this is going to help you get better at sight reading. Because if you're anything like me, your goal is to be a better sight reader so that you can read for your own enjoyment. Maybe you want to do it away from Piano Marvel. I do. I mean, obviously I work for Piano Marvel, so I do a lot of my reading inside of Piano Marvel. But if I was to pick up some sheet music, you know, over the holidays, if I was to pick up some sheet music and that my aunt had in her house, I could probably sight read it pretty well. And that's from the practice that I've done in here. Okay. So those are a couple of resources, like I said, that will help you to improve your sight reading. Once you get to that 650, 700 level, um, I really hope that this video has helped you. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free. If you have any questions for me to email me, my email is josh at pianomarvel.com. I'd be happy to nerd out with you about how to improve your Sasser score. It's something I really love talking about is sight reading. So like I said, I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for showing up here today. Good luck in your piano journey. And I hope to see you later. Talk to you later.